founder and executive director of Grow Jackson, Jacob Innocencio. Hi, Jacob. Bart, how are you? Good, welcome back. Thanks, glad to be back, appreciate it. The uh, organization has uh, really grown and I, I'm guessing it's, it's become more than you envisioned. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't go to school for nonprofit management. <laughs> I didn't um, anticipate this. I was living in an Airbnb in Mexico with my best friend after graduating from college and couldn't shake this idea for Grow Jackson. Mm -hmm. And we moved home after a couple of weeks. We thought we were gonna be down there for six months. We moved home after a couple of weeks, moved back into my parents' basement and you know, formally organized Grow Jackson and it kind of took off from there. And what originally started as a nonprofit focused on fresh food access exclusively mm -hmm has completely blossomed and flourished into what is now my full-time job and is you know far more focused on <clears throat> excuse me education uh, community empowerment so we actually recently just had a revisioning session with our board we sat down and said what are we what are we doing here right we originally started and our mission was to end food insecurity and hunger and i had this whole laundry list of all the different ways we were going to do that in the mission we wanted our mission to be shorter easier to understand and a little more encompassing of the fact that you know we're gonna work with 300 students this year 300 plus students this year like we did last year um, and my goal is far more than that right but that's our definite uh, we are working on a program to use intentional employability uh, for formerly incarcerated folks so that people who are just coming out of prison can farm for Grow Jackson in the morning get wraparound services and workforce development in the afternoon and then after a couple of weeks with us, be uh, able to go well on their way to uh, better choices and better opportunities and using Grow Jackson and farming as a soft landing, right? And of course, we haven't gotten away from our mission of providing fresh food, but we see all of these different facets tied together through this common thread of urban agriculture and community farming. And so we had to ask ourselves, you know, now in year three, what are we doing? How are we using farming to empower people? And how are we messaging around that? Wow, year three. Year three. Well, it's good thing you, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing you went broke uh, after six months at the Airbnb in Mexico. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> but it's become uh, probably a partnership as well. In addition to what you guys <clears throat> do as an organization, you brought on a lot of a lot of partners like yes. uh, YPOP. Yep, Young People of Purpose. Actually, you know, I always like to say these people have brought us on. <laughs> we have been extremely blessed to learn and to grow, to find collaborative partners to take us under their wing, mm -hmm. show us the ropes. And so Young People of Purpose has been an amazing partner. Diane Washington uh, is a tremendous community pillar who has showed us so many things and has shared so much of her expertise with us that we've been so grateful for. Together yeah. We Can Make a Difference has been a great partner and we just had a great event with them over the weekend. Uh, the Big Seed, which Wendy has been doing for, you know, I think 15 years now and we've mm -hmm. been involved for the last two or three. So we've been really lucky to come alongside people and offer our talents and skills where we could and learn a lot from them. Yeah, so this, uh, what I thought was just a little corner garden that uh, Young People of Purpose had, I stopped by and it was uh, the Easter and it was, it's several lots yes. at Mon Maple and it's become, it's a huge community garden yep. now. And this, this Saturday you're doing something there? Yep. Nope, so it's not there. Um, oh. We're on 1107 Adrian Street this Saturday at the Martin Luther King, King Center. Center. Okay. Yep, and that garden, Diane and I partner on uh, at the Martin Luther King Center. And so we're gonna have a community plant day. We'll be building some raised beds, filling raised beds, uh, planting all kinds of vegetables now that the frost date has passed. So it's safer to plant outside, but it is gonna be a little cold this week. So, you know, we're a little nervous about that. No. No. No, it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> it should be fine. I think we'll be in the mid-30s, so I think the plants that are already in the ground will be it's, safe. Yeah, it's, but our weekend event, it's going to be a great way to kick off Memorial Day. We're excited. It's right around the corner from the first Southside Summerfest. So when folks wrap up planting, they can follow me right around the corner, and we're going to go uh, appreciate some of the art and the vendors and the amazing food that that festival always brings. Yeah, so uh, get into two uh, activities and events uh, really at the same time. Yeah. Who can, who do you, who are you hoping to, uh, it's, it's people, the community, the neighbors? Anybody. The, yeah. Absolutely. We want anyone to come. I know Young People of Purpose is going to have uh, their youth worker program there. Mm -hmm. We'll have a lot of volunteers there. Uh, we've had great volunteers for the last month and a half. I know a lot of folks are going to come back. 
Uh, different teams have mentioned they might come out. Some of our students at Rise Above mm -hmm. uh, that are fantastic you know, volunteers for Grow Jackson might come visit. So I don't know. I'm hoping that it's going to be multifaceted. Folks can just come hang out. They don't have to necessarily do any of the manual labor, but we think this will be pretty straightforward and a really nice uh, intro to gardening for some folks who might be a little nervous about it. I remember you were uh, helping people uh, get access to fresh mm -hmm. uh, vegetables, and you discovered that some people didn't even know what to do. They yep. get the vegetables home, and they, they didn't know how to prepare them. Yeah, of course. You know, that's kind of something that uh, we've learned a lot is the education piece is essential. Mm -hmm. And it works so well with us, excuse me, so well for us uh, in our school gardens. I mean, kids get so excited about it. There's that community ownership because the kids have felt like it's their kale, it's their cucumber, they're empowered mm -hmm. through it. And uh, they, get more, they get more out of it when they are involved with the entire process. So I always tell folks, we're not just teaching, we're not just, excuse me, giving a man a fish, we're teaching a man to fish too, we're doing both. Because we want to meet the immediate basic needs of folks, we think that is critical, uh, especially through fresh food access, because it's so often overlooked and disregarded. Mm -hmm. um, but we also want people to feel empowered and to have you know, that sense of ownership and community buy-in too. I think one of the byproducts by providing these opportunities in neighborhoods like around the King Center, those folks who haven't had access to fresh food are going to be um, more enthusiastic and demanding uh, fresh groceries in, in a market in, in the neighborhood. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that people have been asking for for way longer than I've yeah. even been alive. Folks have wanted this and wanted this. And finally, the funding is available. The political will is there. Mayor Mahoney and the MLK Corridor Improvement Authority are doing an amazing job stewarding along what has been a decades-long uh, demand from the city because, you know, there's this, I think, misconception that folks who aren't consuming fresh food right now are doing it or not doing it because they don't want to. And oftentimes we know that because of, you know, targets in marketing or oversights in marketing intentionally, mm -hmm. because of intentional um, unfair banking and housing practices, folks get overlooked and it becomes a class problem. And it's not that low income folks don't want to eat well and don't want to make healthy choices. They're just oftentimes suffering as a product of a system that isn't designed for their success. Right. Did you eat your vegetables as a little boy? Oh, absolutely. Okay. My mom was <laughs> essential. It was essential to her that every day after school, our snacks would be fruits and vegetables. Oh, wow. All right. We'll, we'll see you this Saturday. Thanks for uh, all Grow Jackson is doing in the community. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, Jacob Innocencio, founder and executive director of Grow Jackson. Center Stage Jackson has some entertainment on the campus.